At that very sad moment, a scream cut through the air as the mother held her passing son in his coffin. Dealing with the passing of a loved one, especially a child, is a terrible sorrow that no one wants to go through. We will tell the story of a mother who held on to hope until the very end in today's show. This moving story takes place in Peru and is sure to make people feel very sad. The country has been in a deep economic crisis for a long time, which has had a negative effect on the standard and accessibility of local healthcare services. These services have terrible problems because they don't have enough money or people. This almost caused a huge tragedy that hurt the community forever. Luckily, the situation was barely avoided because the young mother was determined and wouldn't give up on getting her loved one medical care. Her never-ending efforts were a big part of stopping a disaster that could have been avoided. Alessandra's life turned upside down when she found out she was pregnant, not long after she and Dylan broke up. It was scary and overwhelming for Alessandra to think about raising the child by herself without Dylan's help. She didn't know how she would pay for herself and her growing family without Dylan's help. Even though she was scared, she made the hard choice to move back in with her parents to find security during this tough time. Alessandra needed security, and living with her parents gave her that. But there were some problems. In the city, the economy was a mess, and money didn't have much value because inflation was so high. Even though Alessandra went to the city to find work at first, it became clear that she would not be able to find a stable job. She turned her attention to making sure her child was safe, realizing that it was the most important thing. Alessandra was very aware of how dangerous things were getting in the capital, which made her situation even worse. She took extra safety measures to protect herself and her baby, and you could feel her worry. But Alessandra was determined to give her child a safe and caring home even though things were chaotic and unsure. She faced many problems but didn't give up. She stayed focused on making a good future for herself and her child by drawing power from the love and support of her family. The strength of the human soul, even in the worst situations, was shown by how stronger and more determined she was. The area where her folks lived was mostly farmland, and corn was the main crop grown there. Even though Alessandra felt a little bad about going back home, she made the choice to do so. As she walked up to the door of the house where she grew up, her mother's overwhelming feeling met her. Without thinking, her mother sat down and tightly hugged her, tears running down her face. She was worried and wanted to know what had happened. Alessandra had a hard time getting back home because she had to deal with the chaos in Lima, Peru city, where large protests broke out and hurt people. Because her parents were worried about her safety, they couldn't get in touch with her at first, which made their worries even worse. Luckily, Alessandra called them in the end, and hearing that she was safe made them feel better. Alessandra was so moved when she got back to her childhood home and told everyone why she was there that she couldn't hold back tears. Her folks were kind and understanding, and they loved and helped her through this hard time. Because of the scary event, Alessandra had to go through dangerous and uncertain situations to get to her family's home, where she felt safe. But her parents' love and support became an important source of comfort and strength, helping her find peace and comfort during this difficult time. It was hard for Alessandra, but her parents always loved and supported her and promised to help her in any way they could. They were so excited about the idea that the farm would once again be full of kids laughing and being amazed. Even though there weren't enough doctors in the area, Alessandra's mother went above and beyond to find a center that worked. During one of Alessandra's ultrasound visits, the shocking news came out, she was going to have twins instead of one child. This new information gave Alessandra a whole new set of problems to solve. She loved her unborn children very much, but she was worried about their future because she didn't have a partner to help raise them. Alessandra wasn't ready for the unexpected turn that fate took for her. Sebastian had always had a secret crush on her. He had been her neighbor for as long as she could remember. Sebastian still loved her, which surprised her, and he was waiting just around the turn. Alessandra didn't think she would find love in the middle of all her problems, but it looked like fate brought her and Sebastian together. Sebastian loved Alessandra even though she was pregnant with someone else's child. He always helped and supported Alessandra, and she slowly started to do the same for him. But Alessandra was still confused and stressed out because so many things were changing in her life. She used to be in love with a younger farmer, 
but she broke up with him because she wanted to live in the city. She wasn't sure if she wanted to give someone else her issues at this point. Sebastian told her that everything would be okay, even though she wasn't sure. He said that he had taken over his parents' farm and was running it by himself so that they could always live off the land, no matter what happened in the country. Sebastian made it clear that he didn't see any problems with them being together by showing Alessandra how much he loved her. He asked her to marry him by giving her his most valuable possession, an engagement ring that had been passed down through his family for generations. Alessandra was moved by Sebastian's promise and request, but she wasn't sure what to do. She knew how hard it was to raise twins by herself, so she thought Sebastian should not be involved in her issues. Sebastian kept reassuring her, though, by saying he would love and support her no matter what problems they faced together. Sebastian finally got Alessandra to say yes to his proposal, and the two started to plan their future together. They focused on making the farm more useful by planting new crops and getting more animals. The news made Alessandra's parents very happy, and they offered all of their support. They were also very happy to have Sebastian join their family. Sebastian showed to be a loving and attentive partner to Alessandra as her pregnancy went on. He was always there for her, through the good and bad times. Sebastian was there with Alessandra when it was time for her to give birth. He gave her the strength and support she needed to raise their children. Alessandra finally chose to say yes to Sebastian's proposal after giving it a lot of thought. They got engaged. Because of how bad things are in the country right now, the pair chose to have a small wedding with only their closest family and friends. It was hard for Alessandra to fit into her dress because she was pregnant, but Sebastian thought she was the most beautiful bride he had ever seen. Alessandra went into labor and gave birth to their twins about two months after they got married. The couple was so happy and eager to meet their new babies. It had always been Alessandra's dream to give birth at home, with her family there to comfort her. Things went badly when the time came, though. There were problems, and it was quickly clear that they needed medical help right away. In a hurry, Alessandra's family rushed her to the closest clinic, where doctors worked hard to save her twins, Matteo and Angelica. Even though it was tense and hard, both babies were born safely in the end. However, their happiness did not last long because the twins were very sick and needed constant care and attention. Doctors worked non-stop to save their lives, but fate had other ideas. A power outage happened at the center right when the babies needed help breathing the most, making things even worse. Alessandra's family took turns pumping air into one of the kids' tiny lungs by hand, but the child slipped away and passed away despite their best efforts. Luckily, the little girl not only lived, but she also helped her family feel better. Whatever the reason, everyone missed her twin brother very much. Sebastian couldn't stand seeing Alessandra in pain, so he took it upon himself to plan the funeral for their little baby. He knew that closure was needed right away, so he dug the hole himself out of sadness to make sure that Matteo would have a proper place to rest. Sebastian planned the whole funeral with great care and love, and he even got a priest to lead the service. Sebastian did the hard job with a lot of love and care because he wanted to help Alessandra's broken heart feel better. As Alessandra's family gathered around the grave, she couldn't hold on to the small box because she was so upset. She begged everyone to stop the funeral with tears in her eyes, saying she didn't agree with it. Sebastian, wanting to show his strength for her, tried to gently take the box from her hands, but she fought him off. The family, who were there with sad hearts, knew how hard it was for Alessandra to accept the passing of her child. They knew they had to let go, though, and let the child rest in peace. Some people were hesitant at first when Alessandra's mother suggested opening the casket so her daughter could see the baby one last time. Even so, when Sebastian carefully lifted the lid, everyone was speechless. The baby, who was thought to pass away, cried and amazingly was still alive. The parents rushed the baby back to the clinic, where doctors were shocked and asked how such a mistake could have happened. It was probably because they were too busy and didn't have the right tools to prove their first diagnosis. The little boy had been wrongly thought to pass away, but Alessandra's quick action changed what could have been a tragedy into a moment of pure happiness. During the last moments of her baby's life, Alessandra instinctively knew that something was wrong and fought to keep him alive. People were shocked and thankful that the little boy was given a second chance at life. 
There was a sense of divine wonder. The boy quickly got better with close care from the doctors, and both of his brothers could go home to be loved and cared for by their grateful family. The family will always remember the traumatic event, which made them put their children's health and safety above all else. They learned to value the small times they shared with each other more because they knew that life is short. Even though the event was terrible at first, the family saw it as a second chance and decided to take it. They treasured every moment they had together and were thankful for the love and support they got from family and friends during a very hard time. That's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar one. Ron was taking care of his niece Sasha, and when she passed away in a terrible car accident, he was heartbroken. When he opened her coffin at the funeral, the shock got worse. Ron, who worked as a car mechanic and was about to retire, was proud of his son for becoming a mechanic like him. His son learned a skill and quickly married a lovely woman. Together, they had a beautiful daughter. Ron was happy with his life even though his wife had passed away. He liked doing things with his hands and fixing old cars was one of his hobbies. The people in his family, his son, daughter-in-law, and granddaughter, made him happy. After school, Ron often spent time with his niece and taught her how to fix cars. Their close family got together once a week for dinner until something terrible happened in a car accident that changed everything. Ron picked up Sasha from school that day, and the two of them spent time in the garage. Ron started to worry as the afternoon went on and his son still hadn't come to pick up Sasha for dinner. So as not to scare the little girl, he brought her inside and made hot dogs for them. A short time later, he got the scary call. After Ron's son and Sasha's mother passed away in a car accident just two hours before, Ron and Sasha's lives turned upside down. Their hearts were broken because they had lost their only child and dad, respectively. However, they found comfort in the fact that they had each other during their sadness. Ron found out that he had been named Sasha's guardian. This was made clear in his son's will, which he wrote when he became a father. In just a few days, the formal process made Ron Sasha's official guardian. There were big changes coming in both of their lives after this. Because Sasha moved in with her grandpa, she had to switch schools. Ron was almost ready to retire, but he put his plans on hold forever and changed his finances to accommodate full-time childcare. Even though things were unbelievably hard, their support for each other became a very important foundation. Ron knew what it was like to be sad because he had lost his wife before, but Sasha had never lost anyone before and needed a lot of support and encouragement. The school community came together to support them and give the girl more help. Together, these efforts were very important to Ron and Sasha's healing, and they even started a new ritual. Around the time of the day that Sasha's parents were in the car accident, they would go for walks and talk to their neighbors. It was too hard for them to handle being at home between school and dinner because it felt like they were remembering that terrible day. Ron noticed that Sasha was making new friends and chose to join in. They took long walks together to recover their afternoons and find comfort and connection in the fact that they were both on the same path to healing. After a week, Ron and Sasha's walks in the afternoon became a habit. Even though things were bad, they still went for their walks. On a certain dark and wet day, Sasha found something that stopped Ron in his tracks. Thanks to the bad weather, not many people were outside. That may be why Sasha paid attention to the faint sound of a sigh. She took a moment to listen more carefully. Ron, who was a few steps ahead, turned to see what had her attention. Sasha left the path and went toward a group of bushes. Ron followed her and saw a small dog lying in the bushes. The dog's fur was shaggy and its legs were short. It was gray and white. When Sasha and Ron gently approached the dog, they saw that it was hungry and cold. Ron felt like this meeting was meant to happen. He took off his sweater and put it around the dog to keep it warm. Together, they took the puppy to the vet to find out if it was lost or owned by someone. Dog didn't have any tags or chips, and it looked like it had never been trimmed. The vet thought it was either a stray or had been left behind a long time ago. Sasha had grown very attached to the dog by this point and insisted on taking it home. She named it Pepper because of the color of its fur, and the dog replied right away to its new name. Ron and the doctor joked that Pepper had taken them in instead of the other way around. 
There is now a new four-legged member in Ron and Sasha's family. They lived together for a few years and were mostly happy, healthy, and safe. But tragedy struck their family again. Ron told Sasha she could take Pepper for walks by herself soon after she turned 10. Sasha was a good kid who did her chores and schoolwork without any problems. Ron thought it was worth giving her a little more room and time to herself. When Sasha turned 10, the day after, she took Pepper for a walk in the afternoon. Interestingly, they didn't come back in time for dinner. This was the second time in Ron's life that he waited at home feeling scared and anxious. Many thoughts were going through his head. Had Sasha gone in a different direction and become lost? She might have lost track of time because she was talking to her friends. Ron tried not to think about the worst case scenarios, but it got harder and harder to control as the minutes went by. He set the table with food and waited for Sasha. The feeling of dread grew stronger when Ron got a call confirming his worst fears. Someone hit poor Sasha with their car while she was bending down to clean up after Pepper. The dog was lucky not to be hurt, but Sasha had fallen and hit her head on the ground, just like her father did. She was gone in an instant. Ron was so upset that he thought his whole world was falling apart. People in his neighborhood who knew what was going on rushed to help and got Pepper from the police and put him back with Ron. Pepper made him feel better, but it also made him think of Sasha a lot. When the sad news came out, a friend took care of feeding and walking the dog. Soon after, Sasha's funeral came around. Ron didn't make a big difference in the plans because he was too sad. He was very strict about one thing, Pepper had to be with him. Everyone agreed with this choice and sat politely behind Ron and the dog at the service. The priest shut the coffin after the service was over, and Ron and Pepper stood up to say goodbye to Sasha before the wood was sealed. That's when Ron saw something that made him speechless, Pepper jumped up on his hind legs and started barking very loudly. Ron thought Pepper might want to see Sasha's passing body one more time. He opened the box to smell her, and that's when he saw it, the motion of a breathing chest that was both soft and clear. Ron quickly called for help and hurriedly tried to wake up Sasha. At first, people at the funeral were shocked and thought that his sadness had made him go crazy. But when they saw Sursa slowly sitting up, they were all as shocked as Ron. She had been in a short coma after the car crash, but she was otherwise fine. When Ron and Pepper took her home, they knew they would be there for each other for a little longer, so they went on with their lives. The Funeral An angry sister opened her brother's coffin. What happened next made everyone scream. Lily sat in the front row of her brother's funeral. Her eyes fixed on the coffin that held his lifeless body. Tears streamed down her face as she thought. About the things she would miss about him, his laughter. His quick wit. And his unwavering kindness. As she sat there, lost in her grief. Her mind began to wander back to the days. When her brother was a little boy. Their parents had died in a traffic accident. When Lily was just 18 and her brother was only 12. She had taken on the role of mother and father to him. Working long hours to provide for them both. Despite the challenges they faced. Lily had always been determined. To give her brother the best life possible. She'd scrimped and saved to put him through school. And she'd made sure that he had everything he needed to succeed. And succeed he did. Her brother was a computer genius. And he had landed a job at a prestigious tech firm right out of college. Lily was so proud of him. And she knew that their parents would have been too. But then everything changed. Lily's brother had been approached by a criminal organization. That wanted him to hack into a government database. And they had threatened him.
Lily was heartbroken. She couldn't imagine not seeing her brother one last time. And saying goodbye properly, but the doctors were adamant. And there was nothing she could do. So, she began the funeral process. Organizing everything herself. Since she had no other family members to help her. She picked out the coffin. The flowers. And the music for the service. She wrote the eulogy. Pouring all of her love and grief into the words. On the day of the funeral. Lily felt like she was in a dream. She watched as her brother's coffin was lowered into the ground. Feeling numb and disconnected from the world around her. As the last of the mourners left the room. Lily was left alone with her brother's coffin. She couldn't bear the thought of him being gone. So in a moment of desperation. She decided to take one final look at him. She reached out and opened the coffin. Ready to take a last look at her brother's face. But as she looked down. She gasped in shock. It wasn't her brother's body in the coffin, it was a complete stranger. Lily was confused and terrified. She had no idea who the person in the coffin was. Or how they had ended up there. As she tried to wrap her head around what was happening. She heard footsteps approaching from behind. She turned to see a man in a suit. Who introduced himself as Detective Miller. Miss, I understand that this is a difficult time for you. But I need you to close the coffin and come with me, he said. Lily was hesitant, but the detective's serious tone and the sense of urgency in his voice made her comply. As they walked through the funeral home, Lily couldn't help but wonder what was happening. Was her brother's body missing? Had there been some kind of mix-up at the morgue? Detective, can you tell me what's going on? Lily asked. I'm sorry, miss. But I can't discuss the details of an ongoing investigation, he replied. They walked out of the funeral home and got into the detective's car. As they drove away, Lily couldn't shake the feeling that something was very wrong. After a few minutes of silence, the detective spoke up. Miss, I need to ask you a few questions about your brother. Did he have any enemies? Was he involved in any illegal activities? Lily was taken aback by the detective's questions. Her brother had always been kind and gentle. Never one to get into trouble. No, my brother was a good person. He didn't have any enemies that I know of. And he definitely wasn't involved in anything illegal, she said. The detective nodded. But Lily could tell that he wasn't convinced. They arrived at a small police station on the outskirts of town. The detective led Lily into a small interrogation room. And closed the door behind them. Miss, I'm going to be very honest with you. Your brother's body was supposed to be in that coffin. But it's missing. We don't know where it is. And we suspect foul play, said the detective. Lily's heart sank. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. What can I do to help, she asked. I need you to tell me everything you know about your brother. Any information. No matter how small. Could be useful in our investigation, he said. Lily took a deep breath and started talking. She told the detective about her brother's life. His hobbies, his friends. And his job as a software engineer. As they talked. The detective took notes and asked follow-up questions. Lily could tell that he was thorough and methodical. And that he was determined to solve the case. After several hours of questioning. The detective finally stood up and thanked Lily for her cooperation. Miss, I think we have enough information to start investigating. I'll keep you updated. Lily returned home from the funeral. Distraught and heartbroken over the loss of her beloved brother. As she tried to come to terms with his death. She received a call from an unknown number. Hello, she answered hesitantly. Lily, it's me, your brother, a voice whispered on the other end. Lily was shocked. What? How is this possible? 
You're supposed to be dead, she stammered. I faked my death to go undercover and catch a criminal organization. That tried to hire me to hack into a government database. They thought I was the only one who could do it. But I couldn't let them get away with it, her brother explained. Lily's mind was reeling. She couldn't believe that her brother was alive. And that he had been working. As an undercover agent to catch criminals. Her brother went on to explain that the plan had gone awry. When the criminals found out that he was working with the police. They had tried to silence him by staging his death. And stealing his body from the morgue. But Lily's brother was resourceful. He had managed to escape from the criminals and go into hiding. All while keeping the police informed of his whereabouts. Now he was ready to reveal himself and bring the criminals to justice. With the help of the police. He had devised a plan to catch the criminals in the act. And put an end to their nefarious activities. Lily was relieved and overjoyed that her brother was alive. But she was also worried about his safety. She pleaded with him to be careful and to stay out of harm's way. Her brother promised that he would do everything in his power. To stay safe and bring the criminals to justice. He also asked Lily to help him by keeping a secret. And staying in touch with the police. In the weeks that followed. Lily worked closely with the police to help them catch the criminals. They set up a sting operation and managed to catch the criminals in the act. Lily's brother emerged from hiding and helped the police make the arrests. The criminals were brought to justice. And Lily's brother was hailed as a hero for his bravery and dedication. As the dust settled, Lily's brother explained that he had learned a valuable lesson from his ordeal. He had always been a computer genius. But he had never used his skills for good. Now, he had found his calling as an agent of justice. And he vowed to continue to fight for what was right. Lily was proud of her brother and grateful that he was alive. She realized that life was precious. And that it was important to cherish every moment with loved ones. Together, she and her brother vowed to make the most of their time. the most difficult challenges as long as we remain determined and keep moving forward additionally the story highlights the power of love and the importance of family lily and her brother had a close bond one that had been forged through years of struggle and hardship despite the fact that they had lost their parents at a young age they had always had each other their love for each other was the driving force behind everything they did. And it was ultimately what allowed them to overcome the challenges they faced. This love is a reminder that family is one of the most important things we have in life. Our loved ones are the ones who support us, who stand by us no matter what, and who make life worth living, even in the face of tragedy. It is our families who give us the strength and the courage to carry on. Finally, the story highlights the importance of trust and the power of second chances. 
Lily's brother had made a mistake in the past. But he had been given a second chance to redeem himself. He had used that chance to do something truly remarkable. To work with the police to take down a dangerous criminal organization. And in the end. It was this act of redemption that brought him back to his family.